Hello everyone, welcome back to my studio. Have you been considering starting your gouache painting but uh, need to know where to begin? Well then this video is for you. I'm going to be going through all the materials that you need to get started and uh, start enjoying gouache painting. Now you can have a look at some of my other videos with uh, gouache demonstrations and get an idea of what you can expect with gouache paint. And I'll go into the characteristics of gouache in the upcoming videos in this short series. But for now let's take a closer look at the materials that I'm using and that will help you get started as well. Right, so here's all the materials that I'm currently using and let's take a closer look and see what you can expect to have in your own studio. Starting off, of course, with the paints. I'm using a set of Gis Finest. This is 24 tubes of 18 milliliter gouache paint. And uh, I've done a more extensive review on this paint and you can find it in the description below and also where you can get yourself some of these paints. Now there are many manufacturers of gouache paint on the market but I do suggest that a set like this will take care of all your gouache painting needs especially when you're getting to know your colors. Now what colors should you be using? Well what I suggest is that you have a set of colors that cover the warm and cool range for your primary colors and also some important convenience colors and of course plenty of white paint that always forms part of your gouache setup. So what do I mean by warm and cool? Well the primary colors yellow, lemon yellow will be your cool color and a mid or a, a cadmium uh, yellow would take care of the warm. With your reds you've got similar a red light of some sort and maybe an alizarin or a rose or a magenta um, will take care of the cool reds. With blues I like cerulean as a cool and then ultramarine as a warm blue. My favorite convenience colors are colors like uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre and maybe a violet as well comes in handy. As you can see the tubes are relatively large, 18 mils, so there's a good amount of paint there that you can use. I seldom um, use green out of a tube but depending on the subject you're painting a nice powerful green like this pale green over here would be very nice to have and also sometimes a viridian green comes in useful when you are doing a seascape. So I would use that as well. And that's it. Um, it pretty much everything you need color-wise you'll find in this set. And then of course you need something to paint on. Perhaps the favorite and most commonly used is paper. But you can paint on primed panels like this. This is MDF that I've primed with some gesso and that'll make a good surface to paint on. You can also paint on canvas of course. Really any surface that has been well primed for painting will take gouache. So whatever is convenient for you. But as I said I like to use paper and one of my favorite surfaces is this Fabriano um, 300 gram or 140 pound paper. It comes in the spiral bound book and I find it really a beautiful uh, collection that you can build up with your sketches and studies. Now this is cold pressed paper which I personally prefer. It gives a sort of texture to it and uh, that can lead to very nice light effects when you scumble light colors for instance and uh, it helps to build up layers and I like to paint 
in layers as you'll see in my forthcoming videos. So that was a Fabriano watercolor paper. This is also a Fabriano paper. It's the mixed media range. Not quite as heavy. This is a 250 gram or 135 pounds acid-free paper. But also um, slightly grainy as well. There's a bit of a tooth there and you'll be able to use this for gouache. I would tape it down as well just in case. The reason I go for 300 gram is that it's not going to buckle when it gets wet. So anything less than 300 gram or 140 pound paper I would make sure that uh, it's secured nicely um, perhaps with masking tape or something like that to make sure you don't have problems with buckling paper. Now this is some hot pressed watercolor paper also 300 pounds so it's a good strong card but with hot press you've got a very smooth surface. It can be perfect for certain subjects where you want that smoothness, maybe a portrait even, and you prefer the smooth paper. Try them out and see what works best for you. There's not one that is particularly better than the other, it comes down to your personal preference. Right, next up you'll need to apply your paint and of course that means brushes. Brushes for acrylic painting have long handles but for gouache painting I prefer a short handle. So my favorite brushes would be the squared edges that you'd get with a flat brush. These are two short flat synthetics and they work very nicely. This is a nice size to block in on a small um, surface like this. On a bigger surface, an A4 perhaps or bigger, I'd want to start off with something like this. And this you would consider to be a size 10, maybe a size 8 depending on the manufacturer of the brush. Even a fan brush can be used for big block-ins as well. It's a brush that I don't typically use, but for gouache it can work nicely. For more uh, precise shapes, I like this uh, memory point brush. It's made by a German company called Kum, and as the name suggests, keeps its nice shape. It is synthetic and uh, good for detail as well as bigger shapes. Then a couple of smaller brushes. This is just a, a small synthetic short flat brush. That's quite handy. A very nice brush that I use a lot is this Windsor & Newton Sable hair brush. Sable is, is lovely for gouache painting as well as watercolor of course. And if you can get your hands on a sable brush or two then a basic round like this. This is a number three. Um, if you can get a, a bigger one as well that would be perfect. And then it's really as I require. Maybe I need something smaller for details if I'm doing really refined painting. Gouache is great for that too and a smaller brush works very well. But by and large I like to paint big shapes and brushes like this flat work perfectly. Right, then it comes to palettes and a constant um, issue is what palette do I use? How do I store my paints? Because the thing with um, gouache paints is that they dry and they crack very easily when they dry. Now you can go for something like this. If you can't find a purpose-made palette, this is simply an ice cube tray. And I found I really like the containers. And if I use a little spritzer of water like this, I can keep the paints moist and seal them up. And they stay moist and ready to work for several days afterwards. 
but it's not a perfect airtight seal. That is a temporary arrangement and it worked very well. A spritzer bottle like this that I've filled up with some boiled water lasts for a long time and just by keeping your paints moist even while painting and after you've just a few sprays like this keeps it fine during painting. When I'm done for the day I'll give them another spritz as well and cover them up and they'll last for quite a few days. Now if you're looking for a more permanent solution or a, a fancier option this uh, paint saver palette made by Prime Art might be just the thing. It says for acrylics but of course the problems that acrylic painters face is even more so with gouache because gouache dries really quickly. So this is a very nice palette because it's got a lid sealed with rubber to make a good airtight seal. Lots of compartments to work on and some nice mixing space. And when you're done, just wet the sponge, put it in there, which will condense and keep things moist inside and get the lid on correctly, clamp it down and it forms a good airtight seal. Now, if you are going to be using this type of palette, you're going to need somewhere to mix your paints. And these inexpensive mixing trays really come in very handy. You'll just get a bit of your paint like that, put it onto the tray, and then you can do your mixing over here and add in other colors as you go. And as long as you've got space to work, you can mix all your colors very easily using a mixing tray like this. If you are going to use a mixing tray like this, it's already got space in the middle. But if you run out of mixing tray space, having a few of these handy can save you some time and hassle. Containers for water. I use a multi-compartment one. This is a small one I use for traveling around. Have several of them filled with clean water so you can uh, constantly have as much clean water as you can without having to always get up and change the water. I can add one more thing. I have tissue paper on hand, kitchen towel or any sort of uh, tissues or serviettes. And as you're painting um, and you pick up water with your brush, just get rid of the extra water on your brush so you don't get too much water into your gouache paint. And that is more or less it. Okay, now there's links in the description below for some of these materials or you could find them in your um, local art shop as well. But don't let uh, cost get in the way of your gouache painting. The paints I've suggested are very reasonably priced and of excellent quality and use what you have available a couple of brushes and some watercolor paper and you are ready to start gouache painting if you'd like to follow the progress of this series keep an eye out for the next few videos where I'll be looking at some specific techniques that you'll be able to use right away with your first gouache painting Make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, you'll get notifications of the next videos as well. So until next time, cheers for now.